Tarzan and the Diamond of Asher. <laughs> Helen Gregory vanishes from Tarzan's party as if swallowed by the earth. After searching vainly for days, Tarzan joins the remainder of the group at the mouth of an ancient causeway, wherein positive trace of Helen has been found. Before Tarzan and his friends lies a vast stretch of volcanic rock rising in the distance to form the gleaming cone of Tuanbaka, the mountain of sunrise. Because they regard this strange land as taboo, the natives leave and the little party goes on without them. Tom and Wolf wander away from their camp to look over the forbidding prospect they must face on the morrow. An argument ensues. Bitter words follow, until enraged, Wolf whips out his gun. Tom has seen the German reaching for his pistol. Like a flash, he stoops to grasp Wolf's leg. The shot goes wide. A vicious twist and the German falls to the ground, his gun flying through the moon at night. Before Wolf can move, Tom is on him, knife in hand. Hey, you are not hey, Only one of us but it will not be you. Give me the knife. What's this all about, you two? Tom, drop that knife. In a glittering arc, the knife flies from Tom's hand. The ape man jerks them both to their feet, holds them apart as if they were children. As the little group moves silently back toward the fire, Tarzan picks up the knife and revolver and overtakes the others as they step into the circle of firelight. What's the matter with you? Tom. Wolf. Well, I, I've got nothing to say. Hey, thank you. Better talk, Dutchman. If you want to keep healthy. I shall explain, Tarzan. Go ahead. Wolf intended claiming Magra if we got out of this business alive. I told him that was impossible. Is that all? Not quite. He drew his gun. Naturally, I defended myself. That is all. Margaret seems to be old enough to know her own mind. As long as I am with this party, no one will kill her without her consent. I agree to that. But you do not know the history of the case. Magra is my ward, legally. Boudit, Monsieur Tom? Yes. Magra's father was my best friend. We worked together in the same business for years. Before he died, I gave him my oath that I would watch over Magra as long as I lived. I have kept my word and shall continue to do so. You mean then, Monsieur Tom, that you do not believe Wolf to be the man for Magra? That is Magra's affair, Dano. However, I mean more than just that. Magra never knew her mother. She died when the child was not a year old. Since then, I have been both father and mother to Magra. And you have been wonderfully kind to me, Atandu. The child grew into the beautiful woman who sits beside you, Tarzan. I... I love her. It is my intention to make her my wife if we both get safely back to civilization. And if she will have me. I am glad, Tom, there is something about you I can admire. But there'll be no further argument as to who Magra does or does not want until we finish the work we're facing. You understand, Wolf? Yeah, I understand. As far as I am concerned, the question is settled. You are a fool, Wolf, to quarrel with me. We will need our combined brains and strength to get the father of diamonds. Yeah, I, I said I understood. Uh, we forget. Then 
We start early in the morning and go forward quickly, no? How fast we can proceed remains to be seen. We don't know how far Tuanbaka is, but we do know it's going to be no easy trip. Uh, see what you mean. We got to go easy on the grub. Huh? Yeah, sure. But what pain still more important, we have to go pretty slow on the water. All we got in our canteens. And my petite Elaine, she is out there somewhere, and I cannot help her. We find her, Lieutenant. And when we catch the fellas who took Merci, her, we... Merci, Lasson, mon brave. I wonder what kind of people they've been. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if Mr. Tome could tell us something about that, if he wanted to. Oh, Monsieur Tom, if you know anything, tell me. I am afraid I cannot help you much, Lieutenant. Brian Gregory knew. If he is still alive, he knows what manner of people they are. Brian Gregory knew these people? Are you sure of them? Gregory had the story of our share and the father of diamonds from a famous old witch doctor. I read the tale in young Gregory's diary, or uh, as much of it as he had set down. There probably were details which he had not put in writing. And how did you come to read the diary? Did Gregory show it to you? I was as determined then as I am now to get the great gem if it existed. I found the diary one day when he was absent and read it. May I lower this story, Tom, and the people continue away? Uh, there was nothing definite. Simple mention of a great temple in which the diamond is kept under the guard of some talking apes. But the inhabitants! As to that, I can only tell you that they call themselves the Hesiherians. The legend has it that they are descended from a very ancient race. More, I do not know. There is only one thing, however, of which I am now positive. And Tarzan has guessed it. What is that, Atan? That both Brian Gregory and his sister are prisoners of the people of our share. The similar manner in which they vanished is rather significant. Yes. Both of them disappeared without leaving a trace of any kind above ground. Of course, you did not know of the causeway at that time. I think you're right, Tom. We'll find Helen and her brother, if he is alive, in our share. Alors, if we start early, we had best get some sleep now, n'est-ce pas? Yes, and suppose you take the first watch tonight. Sûrement. Uh, Magra, will you hand me my rifle, please, there beside you? Do you mind, Lieutenant Arnaud, if I go with you for a little while? I am not the least bit sleepy. Come with me there. I shall take the second watch. Call me. Bien, Monsieur Tom. Entendu. Good night, Tarzan. Good night, Larson. Good night. Uh, uh, well, a good night's rest before we strike out into that hell. We will be sleeping on rocks after this. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. What do you think of about those two, Tarzan? Tom and Wolf? Yeah. Nothing, Larson. They are just characteristically civilized human beings. Yeah. Tom may be being all right. If he could get the thought of the diamond out of his head, he had been pretty frank with us tonight. But Wolf... I wouldn't worry about Wolf. Tom can handle him. <laughs> yeah, sure. If it ain't been for you, Tom would have handled him good tonight. That's the second time you saved that crazy Dutchman's life. Meanwhile, Darno, accompanied by Magra, has taken up his duty as camp guard. On a little knoll just beyond the edge of the jungle, with the camp under his alert eyes, the Frenchman sits talking in low tones with Magra. Alors, Magra? You are very worried, are you not, Lieutenant Darno? I feel so sorry for you, and yet there is nothing anyone can do. And that is what makes me almost crazy, this feeling of utter helplessness. Yes, I understand. Do you know that I realized that you and Helen were in love before either of you knew it? Oui. Yes. And then Helen confessed it to me a long time ago, before that terrible storm. But I would have known anyway. I had only to watch your eyes when you looked at her. That being the case, Magra, may I ask you a very frank question? Of course. I, too, have eyes, you know. And, well, it is neither... Home nor work, is it? No, Lieutenant Dano. You are right. It is not. But he... He does not seem to care. You mean Tarzan? Yes. Alors, I am not so sure about that. He is a very peculiar man, Magra, yet the finest in the world. I believe you. He saved me from the lion. He has saved the lives of every one of us. 
and is so very kind. But I do not believe that he cares for me. I know positively that he likes you very much. As to love, hmm, that I cannot say. There have been other women in his life. Uh, why do you ask that? You do not answer me. Then there have been. Écoutez, Magra. Tarzan has lived his entire life in the jungle. He had never seen a white man or woman until, you know, until a comparatively short time ago. Then he met a very lovely American girl who, with her father and several friends, became lost in that section of the jungle where Tarzan roamed like any other wild beast. I was a member of that party. I understand. He fell in love with his American girl. She was the only woman of his own race he had ever seen. Yes. It was natural that he should. Tell me, Lieutenant Arnaud, was this lady very beautiful? She was, Margaret. And did she love him? Yes. Then why did she not marry him? There were good reasons why she did not, Margaret. Uh, reasons which possibly you and I could not understand. Yet. Ah! Mon Dieu, Margaret, what is it? Look! Look behind us! There! A death's head, oh. and it glows like fire. Tarzan! Tarzan! Yes, Arnaud! It is like the card masks we saw in the causeway. It is coming after me! Slowly swinging toward them through the branches of the trees and out of the black maw of the jungle appears a grinning mask of death. The specter with its hollow eye sockets, its large calcined cheekbones with the sunken house beneath, and the large jaw bones with fleshless lip drawn back in a mirthless, ghastly grimace, seems to throw off a phosphorescent gleam like liquid blue fire. Suspended ten or fifteen feet above the ground, the gruesome apparition, silent as sheeted death, sways closer. Closer. With an effort, Tarno throws his rifle to his shoulder. As he does so, Tarzan leaps to his side. Wait, Darno. Don't shoot. But, but it is coming for Magra. As Darno's trembling voice dies away, the ghastly thing opens its fleshless lips and speaks. <laughs> 